Reputation is an attempt at a shortcut for judging ideas. We need a shortcut because we can't learn and judge all the ideas ourselves. But instead of a shortcut which skips the actual judgment, we should look for ways to organize our judgment better um, and like aids for judgment, tools to help us judge more things faster. Uh, stuff like that, so we can still judge properly and rationally instead of just giving up on rational judgment. The key aspect of reputation is that it's like a popularity contest. It's based on Joe said Sue is good, Bill said Sue is good, so now I think whatever Sue said is good. None of that is an argument. It sort of works a little bit when there's no controversy. Like, if I'm trying to figure out which restaurant to try, this is a low-risk thing, and if I'm just taking a poll of a bunch of people who have similar tastes to me, it might work okay. But even for something simple like that, it's not a great method. It works better to go skim the reviews on Yelp and look for notable things, like this restaurant has a food I particularly like that someone mentioned was really good. So I'll go there because it matches me better than the average restaurant. You can find like a piece of information that stands out to you in a good or bad way when you look at information that's actually about the restaurant so that you can judge that piece of information instead of just hearing someone said it's good, someone said it's bad which gives you no way to actually judge for yourself. So another thing I want to differentiate is how reviews and summaries are different than reputation. If you read a summary of something, that is trying to give you condensed information. They're not trying to tell you, here's my conclusion, it's good. They're trying to tell you, it said this, it said this, it said this. So they're trying to let you judge for yourself because you have information you can judge with. They do do some of the judging for you because they judge which things are most important to put in the summary. However, the goal of the summary is to help enable you to do some of the thinking for yourself instead of just completely outsourcing it, hearing their conclusion, and not doing any thinking. Similarly, a review of a book or a movie or whatever, it's partly a summary where they're giving you information so you can think for yourself, is that the kind of thing I like? Instead of them trying to tell you for you, do you like it? They tell you, here are some of the important facts about it, now you can think for yourself whether you like it. You won't be able to judge it as well as if you had all the information, but they're giving some of the information to you so that you can make a judgment yourself that's still reasonable and useful. And then the other part of a review is conclusions, but they don't just tell you, I thought it was good, they try to tell you why they're reaching that conclusion, and they try to relate their conclusion to information they gave you in the summary. So they're not just saying, take my word for it. Um, they're helping you see the thought process, the analysis, so you can see for yourself, do you agree with that analysis? Does that analysis focus on the kinds of things you care about? Um, does it have like the same premises you have? Because they could say, you know, I didn't like it because I don't like horror movies. And then you could be like reading that and be like, well, I do like horror movies, so that doesn't apply to me. Reputation gets a lot worse when you're dealing with controversial stuff. Like, uh, consider the question, does the problem of global warming merit communist-style control over the economy? You don't want to just survey people and see, you know, 70% of people said yes, so it's probably true. That would be a completely unreasonable method. Whereas with a restaurant, you can say, oh, well, 70% of the people I surveyed liked it, so maybe I should try it. With the restaurant, it's a low-risk decision, small stakes, so you can not have all the information. When you don't have all the information to judge for yourself, you're taking a risk. Um, but the risk is not a big deal if it's just one meal.
And then on top of that, you have an idea of how other people judge restaurants and whether your tastes are similar to most people's. So if you already know that you tend to have similar food tastes to most other people, which is common, then you can trust their judgment more. So in that case, you're not just going purely by reputation, you're partly going by your understanding and your judgment that you share tastes with a lot of people, so statistically, um, the average opinion of a bunch of people will work okay for you in this case for a low-risk thing where the stakes aren't too high. Whereas with the global warming question and the communist control over the economy, those are very, very high stakes, so you should get a lot of information for yourself or stay out of it. And, see, with the restaurant thing, everyone's sort of on the same side. There's no big point of disagreement. Um, it's just, you know, we all like food, we all like restaurants, and we're trying to find good ones. With the, with the global warming question, there's two sides. So, reputation is just going to be which side is more popular, which side has more adherence, which is totally different than which side is true. Um, with, with a controversial thing, it's fairly common that the minority opinion is true. Like, most controversial new ideas start out as minority opinions. You know, when, when it's new, most people think it's wrong because it's unfamiliar to them, they haven't thought about it enough, they're just stuck in the past. Um, whatever they're used to or already know about sounds good to them, whatever. New, new ideas start out as minority opinions. Most people, um, they just think if they don't know about something, then the thing they do know about is better. Like, they usually do that kind of judgment. So, the new opinion, they don't know about it, so they just think it's wrong. So, that in that kind of situation, you know that people's judgments of the other side are often going to be very dumb. They don't even know what the other side says. And that good ideas can usually start out as minority opinions. So, you can't just say, well, it's a minority opinion, therefore it's wrong. Because even if it were right, it would probably be a minority opinion for a while. So what you need to do is find resources that help you judge for yourself. Things like summaries that mean you don't have to read every book for yourself. You can get condensed information. Um, you know, There's always risks involved in that. The summary could be wrong. It could leave something important out. There's no way to avoid risk, but you can do things that help you judge for yourself instead of just avoiding judgment. You want to try to be having like more judgment, more ability to judge and think instead of less. Try to push it in that direction and find good tools for that. And your tools aren't perfect, but there can be error correction. You need ways to be corrected if you're wrong. Like your friend can tell you hey, you believe this, you read these summaries, but I think you're wrong. Go read this other summary that contradicts them and explains why they're wrong. Or go read this full detailed book if you really care. And you should be interested in uh, techniques for getting information faster and more easily, like speed reading, and listening to audiobooks, and using text-to-speech, and doing those at higher speeds. And you should learn how to skim things effectively. So, like, you can summarize it yourself um, without reading all of it. That's a skill you can learn, and you can get better at it. It's never going to be perfect. Like, there's always a risk that you miss something if you're not reading everything. There's also a risk that you miss something if you do read everything. Like, maybe you should read it twice, and then you'll miss less. If you read it three times, you'll miss less. But you don't have time for all that. You always have to make judgment calls about where the highest priority place to put more attention is. And so you want tools that help support that, like summaries. Not popularity. You want things that can be error corrected. Like, popularity is not error correctable. You can't argue with it. You can't say, well, they were wrong. Because the, because it's not about, like, an argument. It's not, it's not putting forward a claim. I mean, you can say that their conclusion's wrong, but you can't, Something can be popular and wrong, like that's not incompatible. But when you can, with a summary, you can actually argue with a summary and you can say, here's why that's a bad summary, it left this point out. You can't argue with um, popularity because it's not giving its reasoning. You know, no matter what you say, well, 
against the popular opinion, someone could say, well, they probably know something you don't. Um, they probably had good reasoning and you're just arguing with the wrong thing. Whereas when someone actually gives reasoning, if they summarize their reasoning, if they give a short version, if they give the long version, whatever they do, if they actually present information about their reasoning, then you can actually argue with it. You can criticize it. You can point out things that's missing. You can point out logical fallacies. You can point out non sequiturs. You can point out contradictions. But when it's nothing but a reputation, like this is good, there's nothing to argue with. There's no way to correct it. 